Okay, we've been working a lot with um, different images and file system compressions, and a lot of time, especially when you're working with like a desktop computer, you're going to be working with uh, basic image files, which contains uh, it can contain just a partition uh, with a uh, file system, or it could um, have multiple partitions. Today, we're going to create our own empty uh, image file. Um, I think I showed you how to do this in the past once before uh, using, again, I'm going to pronounce it QMU, short for, it's the QU, I'm sorry, QEMU, short for Quick Emulator. Um, I showed you how to use tools that came with that to generate a image in, I think, my ARM series a year or so ago. Um, but you can create it just using the DD command, uh, and that's how we're going to do it today. We're going to say sudo DD, and we're going to give it if an input file, which equals dev zero. That's our zero device. If you were to cat that out, you would cat out basically um, a bunch of zeros. So basically we're just creating a file with a bunch of zeros in it. And we're going to also uh, say an output file. We'll say the output file, we'll call it test.ing or whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call your image file. Now if we did that, we could also cat that into there. It, it, it would just go and go and go until you killed it. But if we're using the DD command so that we can give it a set size. And we're going to do that. We're going to say count equals. And we're going to give it a size. I'm going to say fi uh, 50,000 for right now. I'll hit enter. And I did something wrong. Oh, count with an N. Okay, right there we created a 26 megabyte uh, image. If we wanted it to be, let's say, uh, around 260, it's actually going to come out to be 254. We'll add another zero there. There we go. So you have one that's 256. Let's go back and just make it uh, 26 megabytes. So you can control the size of it with this count. Okay, so now that we have that, uh, we want to actually be able to do something with this image. So if I was to sudo fdisk dash l our test image right now it has no partitions all we have to do is basically format it because we're creating a simple you know one solid image not multiple partitions in this file so we're going to say sudo sudo uh, make fs dot we'll just make it an ext4 just as an example uh, for the test image We'll hit enter. It's going to give you a warning if you're doing an EXT format. It's going to say this is not a block special device. Basically, it's, it's realizing this is not an actual hard drive. It's going to ask if you want to proceed anyway. We'll hit yes. And you can do other formats too. You can do uh, a VFAT format if you wanted some sort of FAT16 uh, or a FAT32 partition. Um, but if we were to sudo fdisk l um, our test image now, you can see that it has a partition. Again, my, I have the font turned up pretty big so that you guys can see it clearly here so the formatting is a little off. But we have this file, one partition, starting at one, uh, and it is a Linux partition. The ID type is um, 83. Um, so now we can actually mount that partition. And since it's an uh, EXT format, we already have a folder in there, the lost found folder. So we're going to say um, sudo mount. Uh, and we're going to say dash o loop our image file. Oh, we need to create some place to mount. So I'm actually, before I do that, I'm going to uh, make a directory. We'll just call it inside our subfolder here. We'll call it mnt. Now we'll sudo mount dash o loop test img uh, to our uh, mount folder. There we go. If we list, you'll see that it has the lost and found folder. Um, if it was like a fat format, it won't have that folder. It will just be completely empty. Let's go in there. It is editable. Editable. We can edit it. Uh, let's make some directories. We'll make test, test1, test2. Oh, we'll say sudo because right now the image was created by, by root or sudo, so uh, it's not modifiable by a regular user. We'll change that here momentarily, but we'll do that. Um, I'll also go into the first test folder and we'll touch a couple of files. One, two, three, four. This create again, sudo touch one, two, three, four. That just creates empty files. 
uh, one, two, three, and four, you can see in their own by root. Uh, again, depending on what you're doing with this image, certain files, because this image, since it's an EXT format, it is going to preserve the, per the file permissions. So give it the permissions that you want it to have when you're utilizing the image. But uh, let's back out here and let's sudo umount our test image to unmount it. Um, now we do want uh, us to be able to uh, use this file outside of root. So I'm going to just real quick, I could probably change the owner, but I'm just going to change the permissions on it. So I'm going to uh, sudo change mod 777 that gives everyone read write and uh, executable permissions even though it's not an executable of this file. Again, depending on your project, give it the proper file uh, permissions that you need. Um, so now, if I list that out, you can see it's still owned and in the uh, root group, but everyone has rewrite and execute permissions of it. So now, uh, that's an image that we can, we could put a file system in there. Uh, we could, we could take a file system that exists from a squash file system off uh, an ISO of live CD or one that we've generated. We can put that in there. Uh, after we mount it, which is stuff we'll probably do in the future. And then you can move that image file to another system, mount it, and then chur root into it. Uh, this is commonly how uh, you could do a, um, a chur root on like an Android device. You would need a ARM uh, specific Linux file system and you could put it into that image and that helps prevent uh, you having to have multiple partitions on let's say your SD card which also have to be in an EXT format which some Android devices are going to go haywire if the first partition on the SD card is an EXT it's going to tell you oh there's something wrong with your SD card which it really isn't but you need those file permissions it needs to be in an EXT or some sort of Linux compatible uh, file system for the file system work because of permissions and now I've babbled on about stuff we'll get into in the future. Let's actually test this out in a virtual environment. Now, there's no file system, there's no operating system or kernel in there, so we can't actually boot from that image, but we can boot from another image. In this case, we'll boot from a live CD ISO, and we will mount, I should probably start doing that because it's going to take a little while for this boot. I'm going to say qmu-cd-rom, and we'll just use slitaz, uh ISO that we have in the folder that we've been playing with. Um, then we're going to say we want hard drive A to be test image um, and then so it doesn't try to boot from that hard drive we're going to say dash boot and give it C which means boot from the CD-ROM. So we're running our virtual machine here just to test this out. Uh, we're giving it an ISO image of our Slitaz uh, live CD image. Again hard drive A is going to be our image file um, and we're going to say boot from the CD. We'll hit enter, let it go, we'll hit enter, and it'll start uncompressing the system and uh, loading the kernel and booting. Um, but again, there's no file system, or there's no, there's no Linux system inside our image file, no kernel, so we can't boot from it. Uh, but again, we're just going to be able to mount it, and it could just be an image file w with files in it. Uh, could be your home directory from one system. Maybe you're backed it up for to another system. Um, different ways of doing this. Um, but you'll see once we boot here, I'll be able to mount that. That in this case, the virtual machine's looking at it as if it's a physical hard drive. We'll mount it and we'll see those files we created within there, uh, just to show you that the image file does work. Uh, US keyboard configuration, US, blah blah blah. Starting up basic display here with no desktop, but we'll get a shell window. Okay, let's become root. And slit has default uh, root password is root. And now we're going to, I don't need to sudo, mount device. And we'll do HDA. We'll hit tab a few times, and you see we have HDA, HDA1, 2, 3. Don't be confused. In this particular case, slit has shows all those partitions, even if that drive doesn't exist. If I do B, you'll see it for B as well, and that does not exist. Now, in many cases on an actual physical system, you're going to have partitions on a drive, and we would say mount hard drive A1 to, to mount partition 1, but we didn't actually put partitions in this image. The image itself uh, contains the file system, so we're actually going to be mounting 
just hard drive A. Again, in a future tutorial, probably next week, we'll look at um, putting different partitions inside that image, and then we will be able to mount hard drive uh, HDA1 or 2. Anyway, uh, we're going to mount it to MNT because it's not being used, and if we move to MNT and list, you can see not only our lost and found, but our test, test 1 and test 2 file uh, folders. We can go inside test and list, and we have our 1, 2, 3, and 4 files. So we did create a successful, brand new, uh, 26 megabyte, in this particular case, uh, image file that can be mounted on any Linux system, uh, and it has an EXT4 format. So anyway, I thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you're enjoying this series. It is part of a series, and there should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. Be sure to check that out. Hopefully you did watch the previous videos before coming to this one. Uh, although, you know, a lot of this was new stuff. Um, but I do recommend watching the previous videos. Uh, checking out my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. Go there. If you have questions, there should be a link to my IRC channel under one of the tabs, uh, probably under social networking. And there you can ask questions. The comments below are a horrible place to ask questions. Also sending me private messages on YouTube. I probably will not see them. If you want to talk to me, the IRC channel is the place to go. I'm not in there 24-7, but if you come to the IRC channel, the whole point is to come in there and hang out and learn and share. Um, so don't expect to come in and get an answer right away. But I ho do hope to see you in there, and I'll do my best to answer any questions to the best of my knowledge. Again, my site is filmsbychris.com, Chris with a K, and I hope that you have a great day.